Well, hello, everybody. It's your favorite day of the week. It is time for another episode of the Reality Reading Rainbow, where I talk about books written by reality stars and try to make sense of them. I am Les Kirkendall Barrett, your host, and I have no idea how this podcast is going to sound because right now I am in Ireland and I am recording this podcast on my phone. So I have no idea how it's going to turn out. There's going to be no theme song. There's going to be no nothing. It's just going to be a bare bones podcast because I left my laptop back in LA. So I hope it sounds all right. I'm here doing a show. Um, I wrote this show. I'm, uh, it's called uh, The Real Black Swan, Confessions of America's uh, uh, First Black Drag Queen. And, you know, it's about this guy named William Dorsey Swan who, was, who went from being a slave to the queen of drag in Washington, D.C. in the late 1800s. And so that's why I'm here. And um, I, I was trying to pack light so I thought I would leave my laptop at home, and then I got here and remembered, oh shit, that's right, I have a podcast to do. So, wish me luck. I hope this turns out on my phone. If it does turn out, then that's going to change my life, because then whenever I travel, I'll just do the podcast on the phone. So, here we go. All right, so we are still talking about uh, tuna, uh, Caviar Dreams on a Tuna Fish Budget by Margaret Josephs. And we are now on chapter six. So, Margaret uh, was very happy with Jan. And she says that she knew that she and Jan were going to get married after a few dates. And um, she says she doesn't regret the marriage, but there were a bunch of red flags that she chose to ignore they kind of came back to bite her in the butt later like for example she advises that you should you know really uh keep an eye on your finances even if your husband is the breadwinner you should still know your finances she said that um that they she and jan had separate bank accounts and pretty much separate everything. Um, She said that uh, she was never on the deed of the house, like Jan owned the house outright. Uh, She, oh, she said that Jan was always worried about money, even though Jan was making an an amazing living. He was always worried about money and he was always stressed about money. Um, Margaret, so, oh, so then Jan, like, they had two separate bank accounts, and Margaret would have to use all of her money uh, on the house and the kids. Even though she was not an owner of that house, she still had to put towards the house. And she said that Jan only bought her gifts on holidays. But she said that she made her own money because she stayed employed, so... So, you know, that was good for her because Jan didn't give her anything. Jan gave her no money at all. And she said that, you know, there was a huge age difference between her and Jan. Because like I mentioned in the last podcast, Jan was only one year younger than Marge Sr. And so uh, Margaret, was in, Margaret was in her 20s at the time. And so people were quick to point out that, you know, their 20 year age difference. Didn't matter to Margaret, though. She loved Jan. She was a devoted mother. Now, Jan came into the marriage with kids. And so Margaret said that she was an instamom. And she said, basically, she went from being a party girl to having her whole life revolve around the kids. And she actually enjoyed it. She, oh, she said before she came into the picture, Jan used to hit the kids. But when she came into the picture, she stopped, put a stop to that, and Jan was no longer allowed to spank the kids. Yeah, I don't mean, 
I, I, yeah, I don't think she meant that he would like punch him and smack him around. I think she meant that he was a spanker. So she, she uh, once she became a part of the family, put a stop to, to Jan spanking the kids. She said that Jan's first wife, who gave up custody willingly of the kids to move to Florida to become a gospel columnist, she said that Jan's first wife would literally only show up on Mother's Day and then pretend like she was the mother of the year, even though she saw these kids like once a year. Margaret then goes on to say that Jan's ex-wife had a prescription drug issue, and so that was a big part of the problem. Now, Marge said on Sunday nights, she would cook a big, huge family dinner. The whole family would come. Jan's side of the family would come, the kids, Marge Sr., and it became like a, a family tradition with them. Uh, Margaret said every summer, she would send the kids away to sleepaway camp, and then when she would send the kids to sleepaway camp, she and Jan would go to the Hamptons. Um, she said Marge Sr., even though Marge Sr. was a shitty mom, she became an amazing grandmother. And uh, then Mar Margaret goes on to say that Jan didn't like Marge Sr., and the reason why he didn't uh, like Marge Sr. was because Marge Sr. was overweight. What I find interesting about this is on New Jersey right now, you know, Marge Sr.'s on there a lot. Well, actually, New Jersey's in the reunion right now. But but Marge Sr. was in during the season. And Marge Sr. looks great. You know, isn't she like 75 or something? Marge Sr. honestly looks fabulous and fantastic. And so... I don't know what she did to lose the weight, but Marge Sr. is snatched. I'm telling you, seriously. But at the time, Marge Sr. was overweight. Jan didn't like her because of that, and Jan was mean to her. Uh, she said that, but she said that Marge Sr. was still drinking, and Margaret tried to get Marge Sr. to stop drinking, and like she would do things like try to get. Marge Sr. to monitor her drinks, or she would point out when Marge Sr. was drinking too much to Marge Sr., or, you know, hey, Marge Sr., why don't you, like, cool it down a little bit? But she said that everybody in the family took Marge Sr.'s side. So the rest of the family would call Margaret a bitch or say that Margaret was being controlling when she tried to get Marge Sr. to not drink so much. But we all know that, you know, growing up, Marge Sr. had a drinking issue, and that affected the way that Margaret grew up. And that was why Margaret, you know, became the parent in that mother-daughter relationship. So I can, even though I don't think Margaret went about it the right way, because there are ways that you could uh, do that, and I think Margaret sounds like a candidate for Al-Anon, she... I, I get where, even though she was doing that, I get where she was coming from. Because even though, you know, Marge Sr. was loving and didn't beat her or didn't neglect her. and Well, actually, she kind of neglected her. But, <laughs> but, um, but, or put it this way, Margaret never went hungry or went without. And at the end of the day, if Marge Sr. wasn't responsible, Margaret had her grandparents to go to. And Margaret didn't, like, abuse her. Or Marge Sr. Marge Sr. didn't abuse Margaret. Um, I do get the trauma that was built up. And I do get where Margaret is was coming from with that. Because she loved Marge Sr. And she just, you know, she didn't want to see Marge Sr. self-destruct. Which Marge Sr. had um, a penchant for self-destruction. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> I felt myself getting caught in the weeds and going down this black hole of an explanation, so I hope what I said made sense. Oh, so Margaret became an honorary she calls herself she called herself an honorary Jewish girl because um her you know, she she was in a Jewish family and so she she, you know, 
she, how do I even put it? I don't even want to say learn this. I don't. She, she, uh, acclimatized herself. <laughs> um, Margaret said that Jan's parents loved her and she had a sister-in-law that she got along with. She said the sister-in-law was the polar opposite of her. The sister-in-law was very granola, but they got along well. Oh, so, so at this point, uh, Margaret decided that she wanted to get pregnant and have her own baby. And so she said, she told Jan, we've been married for a year and I want to have a baby. And so she said that she, she got, you know, she went off of the pill, she got pregnant. And she says that when she told Jan that she was pregnant, he could care less because he was like, well, I've already done this. I already have kids. So she said, basically, she was like, Jan, I'm pregnant. And he was like, oh, okay, whatever. And Margaret ends the chapter with an antidote. Motherhood is not defined by the act of labor. Sometimes you don't know what you are missing until you found it. That was Jan's, that, that was Margaret's parting words on this chapter. Sorry for such a short episode. Um, I, like I said, I'm in the middle of doing a show right now. So I'm literally going to post this and go and I have, a, I have two shows today. I have a, I have a four o'clock matinee and a nine o'clock tonight. So busy, 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 but today's the last day of my show. And, but I'm in Ireland for another week because I'm speaking at a seminar next Saturday. So I'm going to spend next week driving around Ireland and and seeing stuff and I'm having so much fun here I love if you ever if you ever have a chance to come to Ireland take that trip because Ireland is a hell of a lot of fun and the people are actually really nice here anyway I guess that's it so if you want to find me you can find me on my website lesscrookedallbarrett.com uh if if you want to recommend books, you could do that at the reality reading rainbow at gmail.com. If you want to join our Facebook page, it's the reality reading rainbow at facebook.com. If you want to follow on Instagram, it's the reality reading rainbow on instagram.com. And if you want to drop a little Patreon donation, because we do have an after show. And, you know, in the after show, uh, it's a little more chatty, a little more gossipy. And, you know, there is no minimum gift for that. It's whatever you have. But I get it. These are difficult times for a lot of people. So if you can't join the Patreon, then, you know what, listen to the regular show. Because I just like having you here. Your presence is my present. Oh, and guess, guess what uh, the Patreon, how you'd find the Patreon. Guess, guess. Yes. Yep. The Reality Reading Rainbow at Patreon. <laughs> Anywho, I, if you're listening to this, this means that the podcast did record on my iPhone and that it sounded okay. Um, and what else? That's it. So until next time, keep reading. Bye.